What do you make of Senator Espada and uh, his significance and role in Latino politics in New York State? Well, first of all, um, um, <clears throat> there would be no Pedro Espada unless the Democratic Party had not allowed someone as messy as Efrain Gonzalez, you know, who the incumbent he defeated, you know, there was that gaping hole and he was able to step in, you know. So I'm I, sorry, I, what happened I, with Efrain? So our viewers understand. What so happened to Efrain Gonzalez? Efrain Gonzalez <coughs> um, uh, pleaded guilty and now he wants to reverse his, his uh, a plea to basically using public funds for, you know, a whole slew of personal business, you know, including, you know, a, a, a cigar business in the Dominican Republic, et, et cetera. So while he wasn't a despector of that investigation indictment that he pleaded guilty to and now wants to reverse, Pedro Espada was able to ste step in. So there's, there's, some, there's some blame there locally, you know, for as controversial as, as people want to paint Pedro Espada. And I think the problem, Pedro Espada hits a lot of nails on the head. The, whole, the problem is he sounds great, but he's like a slippery fish. You don't know if he, he's for the community or he's for Pedro Espada yeah. in the end, so. Well, and to his defense, he has brought health care to a community, one of the poorest communities in the country. The methods he's used, obviously, are very questionable. And how he uses the Soundview Medical Center for his political gain, obviously, is controversial. And he is under investigation. But he has brought health care to that community, a community, again, that's uh, ravaged by poverty. So uh, that uh, I give him credit for. Now, again, the methods he uses, um, and, and like Erica said, the, the, the person he defeated in order to get into elected office, and some of the other players who accuse uh, of Senator Espada of this, that, and the other are not, uh, their integrity is not, it leaves a, a lot to be desired. Well, but it, some of it is just, a, isn't it, the pot calling the kettle black, as it of were? Of course. And quítate tú para ponerme yo, you know, you get out of the way so that I can take the seat. So it's hard to see the community gain kind of in that, in that kind of situation. But doesn't it also have to be said that that kind of political operation, that kind of political machine and using uh, organizations either for social, social service organizations, health care, Ramon Velas, that that is as traditional American as apple pie? Of course, but what that, that, that leads to, of course it doesn't help the community, and that leads to voter apathy as we were talking during the break. That's why the, the turnout, uh, you're talking, of, for example, in the South Bronx, that race, the poorest congressional district in the country. Uh, you're talking 5,000 people in an vote. area where, yeah, vote. Well, the turnout's very low. In some uh, cases, some polling stations, uh, the poll workers can sit there six, seven hours at a time, and not one person comes in to vote. Wow. So what the, the, the voting population are people served by these institutions that get funding, funding by the elected officials. Uh, and, and they, of course, the staffers in some cases, uh, I want to mention, turn out the vote. And the group, same group of people vote. And, and when you canvass, the same is happening. You know, people that canvass, they say the same thing. We target prime voters. 